Hi everybody, welcome to Mark's 900, I'm Mark. Today I'm going to do a close-up on these SW Motec rear panniers that I've bought for the bike. Now in my last video, if you haven't seen it, there's a link up above. Um, I went through the thought process of why I chose those, and then I did the fitment of all the bracketry, and also I changed out my tail tidy for an RNG tail tidy, and I put these tiny little Oxford Atom indicators on so that I could have the rear panniers sitting over the back of the bike with the tail tidy in place. I did try it with the original big indicators, but you know it just didn't fit they were just too big so uh, i got those indicators on and it's all working like a charm now there was one outstanding problem just before i zoom in on the um on the motex which was that my indicators weren't working properly i had a hyper flash issue now it's quite common when you swap out indicators so what i did originally was to put these resistors in place now i tried different types of resistors and i never got it quite right so um that's not a particularly elegant solution and also you know they get hot and there's extra bullet connectors and all sorts of things you don't really want those on the bike so i scrapped those i've just got the indicators wired straight in and um, i changed out the indicator relay so that's the kawasaki relay which sits next to the battery pop that out put another one in place which cost me five pound fifty from ebay it's a universal led indicator relay and um, it just works brilliantly so now i have got fantastic rear indicators all working exactly as they should do right so about these sw motec bags then because a few of you have asked well what actually were they like in terms of form and function and how do you use them how do you put them on and off and so on so let's dig into that now well the first thing you've got to do is obviously a bit of setup to get these bags to work properly um the first thing is you've got to fit these brackets on the back of the bike so you've got a bracket and a clip um that wasn't too difficult lots of nuts and bolts but it's not exactly rocket surgery so they went on easy enough um, and then you've got the bags themselves. So the bags are linked by this big piece of Velcro. Now, this Velcro is quite strong and there's a lot of it, but I wouldn't recommend that you keep undoing and doing that up. It's more a case of get the, bikes onto, uh, get the bags onto the back of the bike and then set the distance and set it exactly as you should do as per the instructions. Once that's in place, you don't really need to touch it again. So I'm going to leave that connected up because I know that Velcro does sort of degrade the more you use it. So if you set that up and you've got your brackets, the only other thing, which I didn't mention in my last video, is that you get these um, pieces of plastic with the bag. Now what you're supposed to do is put that plastic and wrap it around the rear of your bike. It's just like a sticky back plastic. Now, I don't know what you think about that, but that is going to look absolutely dreadful and it's probably going to peel off. So I have tried cutting sort of bits of it off and just sticking it back there where the bags will touch the paintwork but quite honestly that's not a great solution and there's lots of other ideas on YouTube about what you can do um, some people are talking about putting something on the inside of the bag to stop it from um, wearing on the paint and there's all sorts of other things you could stick on there as well so I'm gonna have a little bit of an experiment with that but there's loads of different answers it might be that I can even just drape a cloth over it before I put the bags on so um, once you've got that set up uh, I think it's pretty much straightforward so let's look at how we put the bags on and off Right, the bags come with these couple of poles which are clearly marked left and right so i put the right one into there clicks into place and the left one exactly the same on the left hand side then the bags go over the top and then once they're over the top you need to slide the bars into the little pockets that are in the back of the uh, in the back of the bags so that one goes in there that one goes in there and the idea is that the weight of the bags is taken across this strap across the back. You don't put the weight onto those bars. And that's why that setup with the Velcro is really important. Right, once the bags are on there, it's quite simply a click of a clip there. And the same on the other side. Clip that into place. And we're all good to go. Now, I've ridden this bike at some speed with these bags on and they don't come off because those clips are holding them in place. They don't slide either because the bars are holding them in place and the Velcro is nice and strong across the back. So that's perfect. So the bags themselves are pretty sturdy. I mean, the zips on them are quite excellent. Uh, the Velcro is really good, as I said. And also, I guess they're not going to be waterproof because they're like a canvas. Um, but you do get a plastic bag that comes with each one so that you can put all your stuff in there. It's going to keep it nice and dry. And I think that's Velcro as well. So yeah, you could put all your stuff in there. Right, in terms of how much you could fit inside these, 
Um, I'll flash some specs up for how many litres they're rated at. But there is um, an extension part on these as well. So if you can't get everything in, you can extend them out further. Like so. So let's have a look at how much we can fit into there. Right then, I've been trying to think of a way to illustrate just how much these bags can hold. So, um, in this bag, what I've got is a bottle of champagne. I mean, why not? So, I can fit that bottle in, lying down, no problem at all. Uh, standing up, even at the deepest part of the bag, I can't quite get the lid down. But if I was to lie this down, I could probably fit, I reckon, about five bottles in there. Now, I was also asked, oddly enough, how many pot noodles I could fit into one of these. And um, obviously a pot noodle fits very easily. I'm thinking I could probably get around about 10 or 12 of those in there. I haven't got that many pot noodles to try it, but yeah, I definitely think 10 or 12. Now, of course, more sensibly would be to see if I can fit a normal amount of luggage into these bags for a trip away for a few days. So to that end, what I've got here is um, six t-shirts, six pairs of undercrackers, six pairs of socks, Two jumpers, one's a hoodie, one's just a jumper. Um, a pair of jeans I've got in there somewhere. No, a pair of jeans down there. I've also got my wash kit and then I've got all my charging cables and drone and all that sort of stuff. So the point is, will all that fit into these bags? Okay, that just about fits all that kit, although I did have to put the expansion sides out on these. Um, to be fair, that wasn't a particularly tidy way of packing, that was just rammed in there. But yeah, it all fits. Um, that's good. Unfortunately, didn't have room for the champagne, so I'll have to leave that at home. But yeah, everything else was just fine. So there we go, the bags are on, they're fully packed and all expanded out, and that's what they look like. Now, if you're wondering what it's like to ride with a set of these bags on the back of the bike, I went out for a nice long ride on Saturday, and, um, and this is what I got up to. Well, what a glorious day to go for a nice ride out on a Saturday in March. Just for a change, it's stopped raining and the roads are pretty clear. Whoop, well there's Mr Plod going past, just coming back from hanging out on this bridge with the speed camera. So we're going to try not to smack into him, and then we're going to hoof it round this roundabout, whilst trying to avoid the massive gaps in the tarmac, which take your wheels into a world of their own. Then we come off this roundabout, give it some beans up to the speed limit along this stretch, and you'll see from my shadow on the road that as we head up here, the panniers are in place and holding their own. Now my trip is to a place called Motorcycle Megastore, which is in Swindon. I can get there really quickly, but we don't want to do that, so I'm taking a mixture of dual carriageway with a 70 mile an hour limit and winding A roads through the countryside with a national speed limit, which for that type of road is 60 miles an hour. Now the Motorcycle Megastore is well worth a visit if you're ever anywhere near Swindon. And as you can see, it's packed with stuff and even a few classic bikes. And kit from here comes in at about the same price that you can get on the internet, but obviously with the advantage of being able to try it on first. Now I've bought all sorts of stuff from here in the past and today I've got my panniers on and wallet at the ready so let's go shopping. Now back to these panniers as I go ripping through the A435 from Seven Springs to Sirencester. How do they feel on the bike? Well whether they are full or empty I can't say that I really noticed them. In fact I was quite unnerved when I first looked in the mirrors and couldn't see them. Now I appreciate that I don't have the greatest rear view mirrors but all I could see was my legs with the bags tucked neatly behind them. Now I could just reach back and fill the bags, which I did once or twice, but I soon got my confidence up with them, and no matter whether I was hammering along a dual carriageway, ripping along A roads, or throwing it into some twisties, the bags just did exactly what they're supposed to do. No dramas at all. The only time I did notice them, if I'm honest, was passing a couple of big vehicles, and the slipstream off them felt much stronger than normal, so perhaps that was down to the bags catching some of the air and pushing me slightly off course. It wasn't dangerous, it's just an observation. So anyway, I've got some stuff, happily packed it into my panniers and headed back home again. Once more, no dramas, so I'm really happy with these SW Motec, and I can't recommend them highly enough. There are loads of others out there, Krieger, Shad, Oxford and more, but I haven't really tried them, so I can't really compare them, and I'm certainly not looking at any of the others and thinking that I made a mistake with these. Right, that's my review of the SW Motec bags. I'm chuffed to bits with them and wouldn't hesitate to recommend them. My mate has the same panniers on an MT-09 and his view is exactly the same as mine, so I guess they're going to be great on any bike. Well, I think that's enough on these Motex. Let's hope the weather holds up and we can all get out there on the roads a bit more.
So keep your chains old, and I'll see you next time for some more bike-related shenanigans. See you soon.